this is Gamer T here with you. We're looking to do and get into the Sea of Thieves Season 10 preview. Let's see if it's going to live up to hype or the standards. I'm interested. I've been a beta tester in this game. So we're talking before it launched. I have about 3,800 hours in the game. You've seen my streams. You've seen my videos. Let's see what's up and get right into it. And welcome to the Sea of Thieves Season 10 Preview. We're going to be hearing from the team here at Rare as they give us the lowdown on the headline features coming to Sea of Thieves as part of Season 10. With a whole new way to engage in social play, to a competitive experience within the shared world, and an exciting new feature that will fundamentally change how you play the game. We are bringing an incredible amount of new features to Season 10. So to get things started, let's go over to Sea of Thieves creative director, Mike Chapman. Hello everyone. Firstly, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for your patience and understanding regarding the delay to season 10. We know that season nine has run exceptionally long. But what this means is that season 10 will now very much be a super season. When season 10 launches on October 19th, it will feature the experience originally planned for season 10. But for November, November will include the experience we planned for season 11. And for December, something a little bit different, a new way to play and enjoy Sea of Thieves, something we've been thinking about for a very long time. Okay, so what I'm hearing him say is October is going to be season 10 content, November season 11, and then December extra. So they owe us. Let's, let's not be coy. They owe us. But Rare is always very good about answering um, community feedback, anticipating community feedback, even after the launch of the game, when it was a little rough. They had like weekly videos and they were engaging. So, I mean, if Rare is, you know, on top of it and continues to be on top of it, that's a good thing. Because they definitely put on a clinic of how to communicate with their community. But for now, I'm going to hand over to Shelley and James, who will talk you through the first feature that will be launching with Season 10 on October 19th, Guilds. In Season 10, we're introducing Guilds, which is a new way for players to form meaningful bonds beyond their immediate crew and builds on the uniquely engaging social gameplay of Sea of Thieves. We believe that being part of a crew and playing together is one of the best ways to experience Sea of Thieves. We wanted to bring that experience to more players more regularly. Guilds bring players together under a shared name and identity with common goals, which really gives players that framework to experience the best of the shared social gameplay. With guilds, you can have 24 of your friends, or enemies if you like to keep them close, in the guild with you at any one time. We kept it at 24 so the experience was an intimate affair, making sure that you knew everyone who was contributing to your success. Any captain who has their own ship is able to create a new guild. Alright, so hold on. So like Destiny 2, that's my best reference for a clan. This is a clan. Guilds or clans. You can have 24 people and they're like, okay, we want you to know everybody that's in it. Now I respect that because like alliances, you can have people that join up and, you know, torpedo on purpose, your efforts. So I get that, you know, so you don't want maybe hundreds because let's face it, the enemy in my estimation, in my opinion of the spirit of Sea of Thieves is or are Discord servers, right? So I think they have those specifically in mind to not just absolutely slay in a guild. Um, man, nothing brings me more pleasure than knowing I'm on a Discord Alliance server, not in an, not an organic Alliance server, but Discord and trying to sow uh, discord and try to just blow them up and make them all mad at each other. So, all right. So guilds, 
Got it. Let's let's hear more. Because you need that very first ship to be pledged into the guild. But beyond that, anybody can join the guild, whether they're a captain or not. When you set up a guild, you get to choose a few unique properties on it. You get to give it a name, something unique to speak to your guild members. You get to give it a motto to make sure that you're all striving for the same goal. And also you can choose the branding, the pictures, the iconography that really will show your guild off. Once you join a guild, you can pledge any of your captainships into the guild and you can also choose whether or not to share it with your guild mates if you share it they can take it out even when you're not online all your cosmetics and your identity all your trinkets and paintings everything will be as you left it and they can even progress the captaincy milestones on that ship while you're offline all right so they can work towards your goals if you have a crew or people that want to do that that's great uh, the naming of the guild, hopefully they're less restrictive than they were for captain, captained ships. I doubt it. Um, they're fairly restrictive. You'd pick names and words, I should say, that you're like, how is this a problem? Maybe, I don't know, I'm not British or UK. That's a slang term over there or whatever. But I was like, huh? So I had to work at my USS Gone Bananas. Um, now my, my uh, brig is, you know, the Grim Reaper. Two M's, Grim Reaper. I thought that's pretty cool. But that's okay. So you got 24 people. You can name a ship and have people sail under your flag, essentially, right? That's essentially what you're allowing. So you got to trust people. Interesting. No matter whether you want to go and collect loot, whether you want to fight under the hourglass, any action you take in the Sea of Thieves will progress your milestones forward. Even better. You can progress while you're offline. Your friends can be sailing under your guild banner when you're away on holiday or asleep. So you'll come back refreshed and possibly with a shiny new hat. As everyone in your guild contributes to earning that shared guild reputation. Like they don't know what a, we know what a clan is. We know if we go away and come back, our clans are punching away that we're going to get stuff. It's okay. Together, you will unlock new and unique rewards for you and your guild, and you can even earn a distinction at every 100 levels of reputation, unlocking further rewards. Guilds brings players together like never before, and we're super excited to see the guilds you create when Season 10 launches on October 19th. In November, as part of Season 10, we're launching a brand new voyage called the Skull of Siren Song. The Skull of Siren Song is our first competitive voyage, and it will see players. I swear this guy looks the same as when I first saw him years ago. Like whatever he's doing, keep doing it. Share the same treasure maps and compete and race to collect a single piece of treasure. Like other world events, the Skull of Siren Song will appear randomly throughout your session. And when it's active, you'll see this ghostly note appear pinned into the mast. And you can interact with that, opt your crew into the event and take part. When this voyage becomes active and you see that note on your mast, you know that every other crew in the server is also seeing that, and they become potential rivals as you all seek out the Skull of Siren Song. This sense of mystery around the other crews that may or may not be hunting down the same treasure as you provides real tension, especially to the start of these shared voyages. You'll spend much of your time scanning the horizon, searching for sails that could be approaching, with the view of taking your hard-earned treasure. So once you've accepted the voyage, the ghost of Captain Briggsy will appear on your ship and set you on the hunt for the Skull of Siren Song. So it's this high-intensity race for all crews headed towards this. Again with the galleons. Seriously. Uh, <laughs> when you log in and play, mostly sloops. I mean, if you come across a galleon, you know when you see me streaming, I'm like very excited for PvP. It's rare. Hashtag this one piece of treasure. At the start of the voyage, every crew who opts in will receive two maps. One leads to a key and the other to a chest. And once players have dug up those two items, they have to combine them to open the chest and retrieve the Skull of Siren Song. All right, so when you get the knife on your mast, there's two locations in the world, a key and a chest. Everybody's en route to get one or the other. Okay, so this is shaping up to be the high seas sweat neck beard lord opportunity of a lifetime so in the early stages of the voyage one crew might have the key and another might have all right so if you look at that it's the same as if you grab a yellow streamer or the yellow reaper chest or the other reaper chest the red one with the multicolor i call the streamer the thing that shoots up into the sky um 
And it's kind of like, you know, arena. They kept that mechanic where you see where it is, what ship it's aboard. It's not a mystery. Interesting. Have the chest and at any point these items could come together or change hands or a new ship may arrive and take both of them. And this kind of unpredictability makes these stages really exciting as no one's quite sure what's about to happen and you have to react to all sorts of different circumstances. So what I love about it is the quest isn't over till it's over. Someone might have the key, someone might have the chest, but you can see the beacons in the sky, you can track them on the world map table, and you can ultimately sail well, play well together as a crew, and intercept them and steal the treasure for yourself. So will there be this and a Fort of Fortune at the same time? If I'm rare, I'm not doing that because the Fort of Fortune brings the Sweat Lords out. They server hop and sweat lord themselves over. Well, let's see what they do here. I mean, there's who knows what these will be worth. Once the chest has been opened, the skull of Siren Song belongs to the crew who opened it, at least for now. This new item is a powerful weapon that can be used against other crews to defend your ship, but it also comes with its own set of. All right, so the Ash of Wind Skull, that's the same mechanic, only it breathes fire. It breathes fire and it reduces the value of the skull immensely if you breathe the fire. So I wonder if that's going to reduce the value of this skull if you do that. Interesting. Challenges. So once you've got the skull on board, you have to protect it with your crew. But that skull is cursed and that's going to make your ship slow down, which means other crews will slowly start to catch you up. So whether you've got the skull on board or whether you're chasing after the skull, it's not over until it's over. Oh my God, this is the Sweat Lord's wet dream right here. So you get the, <laughs> you get everything on board, you get the skull on board and you can't go anywhere real fast, giving everyone the chance, including Sloops, to catch up to you. <laughs> so if you're doing this, you better be a crew that knows what you're doing or on the emptiest server on the planet because... I mean, you just don't stand a chance. I mean, PVP is guaranteed. There's no running, right? Like, oh, I've got the Fort of Fortune key. I'm gonna out I'm, I'm gonna go into the wind and outrun people in a sloop. No, no. There's a hundred percent chance you're gonna get into PvP cannibal range in action and boarding and chain shots and all that. Wow. This slowing down of the lead ship makes for some really tense moments as you almost can't avoid combat. We think this voyage is really exciting because it's a more focused, competitive voyage that can take place as part of your normal Sea of Thieves sessions. The unpredictable nature of when it's going to start and who else may be battling you for this treasure is an exciting moment to have, and crews will have to adapt and react to this if they want to be the ones to claim the skull for themselves. We're really excited to see the Skull of Siren Song bring players together Maybe give us an idea of how much it's worth. Should we give a damn? Just saying. Together in this competitive voyage, and you'll be able to play it yourself in November. As you saw there, we've got some great new experiences coming to season 10. Social play has always been at the heart of Sea of Thieves, and that's why we're so excited to bring player-created guilds to the game. And just that idea of racing to find the treasure against other pirate crews in the world is why racing you're handicapped we're so excited for the skull of siren song but as we look to december we've got something a little bit different planned as we look back on the journey we've been on creating sea of thieves right from our original launch back in march 2018 to where we are today with the game and its community one of the most passionate and resounding pieces of feedback from both existing fans, but also players intrigued by Sea of Thieves, is the desire to play outside of the shared world. The ability to experience pirate adventures in Sea of Thieves on your own or just with your chosen friends. This is something we've thought long and hard about. How do we provide players with the ability to do that? while also safeguarding what's so unique and magical about the shared world of Sea of Thieves. After lots of consideration, we believe we've got the answer to that in Safer Seas. Safer Seas is a new way of playing and enjoying Sea of Thieves. 
It allows you to play alone or with up to three chosen friends in a private world in Sea of Thieves. Private world. Wow. Finally, after five and a half, almost six years, the complainers on Reddit and the Sea of Thieves forums have won. They finally got their private servers. Wow. That's huge. Let's see what they have to say about them. What's really important to stress is that the game that Sea of Thieves represents today, all of that shared world magic of the game, that continues to be the primary way of playing the game. But the adventure mode in Sea of Thieves will now give you two distinct options. High seas, the game as it is today, but also safer seas. And so they're taking out, uh, what is it? Adventures of Monkey Island, right? So that's gone. Pirate's Life is gone. There, I presume the Tall Tales will still be there. But these are the... Wow, those are your two options. <laughs> that new way to play and enjoy the game. Over the last five years of creating Sea of Thieves, the game has grown into this huge experience with so many diverse aspects to it. And the reality of that is we want to teach people how to play the game, but we also don't want to lose the joy of discovery. So the way we think about Safer Seas is as a great way to learn the essentials of Sea of Thieves, to be able to learn the flow and the pace of the game before then moving on to high seas. And alongside allowing newer players to get to grips with the game, it also allows experienced players to truly immerse themselves in the world and take it at their own pace, experiment and see everything the world's got to offer on their own terms. So we see Safer Seas as very much a complementary way of enjoying Sea of Thieves. A new way to enjoy the game with your friends or to immerse yourself in the world. Safer Seas won't evolve separately with its own unique features. It just provides that new window into experiencing Sea of Thieves for the first time. Oh, man, I just... You can tell that they've crafted this narrative. They've crafted it because there's been so much angst over this so much angst um your window into the world or this that the other uh i get it i mean i've made videos where i was able to sit and record sunsets and sunrises and uh it was okay but i don't know man uh i feel like they're giving in right i think they're catering that's the word. They're catering. They're, they're like, how do we bring new people in? The reputation is that PVP is always on. So now you don't have to do it. And they'll get this, the people that really are not a pirate at heart uh, to do it. And, you know, if that's the direction they want to go, that's their prerogative. So this is changing the dynamic. So now you're going to get more of the sweats in high seas or formerly adventure mode, aren't you? I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but at the same time, the whole idea is that you run into new people. How many times has some people, including myself, come upon a new ship and we're like, Hey, how you doing? Oh, here's some treasure. Oh, you're new to the game. Blah, 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 blah. And that could still happen. But man, they are really taking efforts here to avoid that. Oof. So when we think about the specifics of what progression means in Safer Seas, as I mentioned earlier, we want this to be a way to learn about the game, learn about the systems and how to progress in the game. So players will earn progression in certain trading companies, but it will be at 30% of the value of what you'd earn in high seas. Okay. So there's a punishment there, but you're still able to earn. And there will be people that will say it's worth it because they don't have to deal with people. I mean, if they want to grind that much harder, that's three times as hard. Um. <laughs> so both progression and gold will be earned, but at 
In terms of progression in trading companies, your progression will be limited to level 40. So the choice with that cap is very much deliberate. We want you to be able to experience all the multitude of unique voyages across those trading companies and experience what it feels like to move up through the promotions of each of those trading companies. But crucially, you won't be able to become a pirate legend in safer seas. And in fact, the Athena's fortune. Yeah, so level 50 in Merchant, Gold Hoarder, Order of Souls, and Reaper Bones, any of those three would get you the Pirate Legend. So the fact they're not allowing that, okay. Um, will they allow merchants, multipliers to apply? That's the next question. Trading company that represents Pirate Legend, its voyages, its activities, commendations, rewards won't be available at all in Safer Seas. All right, so, so Athena. All right, so Athena's is going to be just in um, regular, right? High seas. Key features exclusive to high seas. Become a pirate legend. Earn reputation and gold for Athena's fortune and the Reaper's bones. Nice. Hourglass faction battles. Captain your own ship. Sail as part of a guild or clan. Sail as trading company emissary. Live events. Gold and glory. Oh, that is always. Oh, man. If there's ever anything that's ever worth anyone's time. Golden glory is it. Okay. There's a whole host of experiences that we don't believe are right for safer seas. The PvP focus of the Reaper's Bones and the ability to play as the factions as part of that PvP gameplay that won't be available in safer seas. The ability to purchase and captain your own ship. The ability to join one of these newly added player created guilds. Plans. And the ability to play as a trading company emissary. These are features that will remain solely available on high seas. So high seas very much remains that primary and aspirational mode of play in Sea of Thieves. But Safer Seas provides you this alternative way to learn the basic. All right, so key features included in Safer Seas. And I like how they use higher seas or high seas. High seas, like high seas adventures. Like it's a good play. Some time and effort and thought has gone into this for sure. All right, so key adventures inc included in Safer Seas. Progress up to level 40 instead of 50. And Reapers and Athena's nothing. Okay, appreciate that. Earn golden reputation at a reduced rate. I think it's 30%. Okay. Earn seasonal renown at the same rate. That's fine. Play through all Tall Tales solo. Okay, so if there's ever... Okay, got it. If you're going to do Tall Tales and don't want to get messed with, this is, this is what... Yes. This is what Safe Seas is for. And maybe it always should have been for. Um, whenever I come across people in Tall Tales, and maybe you've seen this with myself or other streamers, right? Oh, you're doing a Tall Tale? Let them alone. That's like the cardinal rule. But now it's like a protective bubble. So I'm, I'm good with that. Work towards all applicable accommodations and achievements. Oh, so applicable. Um, will they come at 30, 30%? You know, will the efforts retard at thir to 30% as well from 100%? We'll see. Purchase cosmetics from the outposts and CPO stores. Who cares? Invite any Xbox Live friends into your site. Okay, so it's letting you know it's co-op. All right. The rhythm and pace of the game. There's a lot more to share and we'll be sharing specifics about what's available in each mode as we get closer to our launch in December. We believe Safer Seas unlocks whole new Sea of Thieves experiences. That idea of going on a pirate adventure with your family, exploring the world at your own pace. The ability to immerse yourself in the storytelling of the world, playing all of those tall tales. Maybe going on a fishing trip with your friends or capturing cool video content to share. Without the worry of scanning the horizon for other unknown players, we believe that Safer Seas will lend itself a completely unique feel. This is very much your story in a private world. And we believe that complements the adventures that you can have on the high seas. This is the right time to bring Safer Seas to the game. The game over the years has evolved to be so big and diverse with all of these wonderful experiences on offer. We want to provide an effective way for new players to come into the game and understand what makes it so special.
And as we look to the future of the game, we're more excited than ever to make this the best pirate game possible. If you like pirates, there should be something in Sea of Thieves for you. That's why we're so excited for Safer Seas and the future ahead next year. Something for everyone. That's, that's what they should just say. Something for everyone. Oh, I can't help but think they're capitulating. I get it. I agree and I disagree. Um, I don't know. I need time to process. What do you all think? Please leave your uh, thoughts in the comments, man. This is something real. Uh, this is something you've never done since the launch of the game. Let's talk about it. With these three headline features arriving as part of Sea of Thieves Season 10, this is going to be our biggest season ever. On October 19th, with guilds, you'll be able to play with others under a shared identity, creating meaningful social bonds, all while engaging in a new progression route that will unlock some incredible new rewards. Plans. In November, with the Skull of Siren song, you can take part in a fast-paced adventure, battling against other crews Sweat in an action-packed race to be the first to claim a powerful ancient artifact. And in December, with Safer Seas, you'll have the option to head out onto the Sea of Thieves and engage with the world at your own pace. Whether you're sharpening your... If you're a wee baby! I feel like <laughs> he should just talk like Big ba uh, Bat Bastard from Austin Powers. Oh, look at that wee baby! Oh, you want to go at your own pace, do you? Skills at a sea fort are taking on one of our many tall tales. This will allow you to experience a large portion of Sea of Thieves... Love... The filthy casual sales, by the way, right? Every time <laughs> I do appreciate that. And it's not gonna noticed. Uh, that's funny. Oh, you want to do safer seas? Oh, you're filthy casual. There's plain sales. <laughs> if you play this game for any amount of time, you get that. In your own way. We're incredibly excited for you all to experience the new features that we've outlined here today. But this, of course, is just part of what we're bringing with Season 10. Keep an eye on our social channels for more information about what else is coming as part of the season and for more detailed looks about the features we've mentioned today. We're now at the end of this Season 10 preview, so thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you on the seas. Oh, man. October 19th. We'll see what's what, but I got to tell you guys, yeesh. I mean, there's good, there's bad. We'll see how it shakes out, and that's always what it needs to be. We'll see how it shakes out, right? We'll see what happens. We can say this is how it's going to unfurl, but we'll, like sales, we'll never know for sure. All right, so that's it for this, this uh, reaction video. Thank you for taking time out of your day, week, month, year to watch it. If you had a good time, thought the... Uh, content was worth it. Please leave a thumbs up if you really liked it. Feel free to subscribe, and the Discord link is in the description. We'd glad we'd be glad to have you there. Have a great one. This is Gamer East saying. We'll see you next time.